In today's video, we're going to check the Big Joe herd and see how he's doing since breeding season has kicked off here at the Ponderosa. We're gonna go visit someone that you haven't seen in a while. We also set up a trail camera and we got some great footage of our bison hanging out at one of our ponds. There's a lot more things going on in these ponds than we thought. Hope you're ready for another bison video. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. It's hot, it's summertime. Big Joe <laughs> and the herd is cooling off here in our creek. We've always talked about finding a way to use this water. Maybe you guys can help us out. I wanna thank Fabric for supporting this guy and what we do and sponsor today's video. This herd looks a little bit different now. We've got less females and one less breed bull. So that means Big Joe is the main man. Will we ever get another breeding bull? I don't know. So the question is, is can Big Joe breed 26 females? The ones that should be in heat or the ones that didn't calf this year. I think we had seven or eight that didn't calf this year. So they should be the first ones to be coming in heat. I could be wrong, but that's the way it should be because they don't have calves on them. And so these mamas that have calves right here, actually hanging out in the water, rubbing on the branches over here, getting a good scratch. They're hanging out in the shade because it is hot. They're hanging out here in the creek behind Marissa as well. These mamas had their babies, most of ours in May, which is perfect. That's what we want April and May before it gets too hot like it is now, which we're in the 100 uh, degree temperature days now. So, hey guys, what are y'all doing in there? <laughs> so funny. It's all right, little red dog. We don't know our genders yet on a bunch of these bison, uh, on a bunch of these calves this year. But to me, by looking, it looks like we have mostly, mostly heifers, just by a quick glance. I've seen a lot of heifers this year. But because the mamas had their babies in May, it's a quick turnaround for these moms right here because they should be coming in heat in about two months after um, having a red dog. And so typically breeding season is July and August and into September. We're gonna do something different this year, uh, more than likely, and I've got this information from other bison ranchers, maybe to help this guy right here, Big Joe, and if we ever did get another breeding bull, remember we can't put Dunbar and Big Joe together. We got two matures that didn't grow up together. Those guys can't be together. That's why Dunbar is over at Mom and Kevin's at the OG, the original place. We need to go visit him, by the way, and give you guys an update on how Dunbar is doing. Yes, Big Joe's got a lot of ground to cover this year, and uh, we're gonna see how it goes. Great blue heron, more than likely coming down here, feeding a little bit. A little water hole. So Marissa and I are just doing a herd check. We'd like to come down to the creek and uh, just check the water, see how it's doing and make our rounds, check fences and stuff like that. But we come down here a lot actually, where it's a nice, pretty, foundation of rock. Brooks loves to come down here. We came down here the other day and I got to thinking about some things just watching her uh, and Marissa were hanging out here stacking up these rocks and it made me think of Brooks's future. Uh, Marissa and I started out as uh, small business owners and basically started from scratch and had to build our business up. But what would be really nice is to have a head start. What would be nice is to have that initial push, that kickoff to start a small business. And you can do that right now. Fabric by Gerber Life offers these simple and easy investments that you can start on right now for your child or grandchild. These investment funds don't have to just be used for a small business. These funds can be used for summer camp, equipment, anything that your child may need to help them grow. Are we setting up these kids for success? Help your kids succeed. 
and I used to preach that as a coach and a teacher, that still resonates with me. Instead of buying lots of toys that your grandchild or child will play with one or two times and it disappears in their bedroom, why not stack those stones? Look at building a foundation for your child. You can set up their future now by starting that investment account with Fabric by Gerber Life. It makes it easy. You can do all that within a couple of minutes. You can set up an account and with as little as a dollar a day, you can invest in their account. By the time you build those rocks and stack those stones and build that foundation, there's no telling the opportunity that you may have given them. Just because you started something today, you can really help them get a big jump start on their career or an investment in whatever they want to do. Fabric by Gerber Life can help you get there. Just by investing, you can help your child reach that goal and set them up for success. Kids investment account allows you to invest on their behalf and gives their investments more time to grow. There are no contribution limits, multiple tax advantage, plus no commission fees, and then just a low, flat, monthly maintenance fee. Fabric by Gerber Life was designed by parents for parents to make it easy to plan for to manage your family's financial path. Join thousands of parents who trust Fabric to protect their family. Start investing in your child today at meetfabric.com slash bison. That's meetfabric.com slash bison. Remember this rod? Oh yeah. You guys must know where we are. Dumbo! Well, it doesn't look like I'm at the drive through. I see him down there. Some of the rest of them are gonna come up here and say hi. <laughs> I'm gonna go check this water. All right, so here you go. Dunbar's got a couple of young heifers in here with him. What are you doing? Hey there. And Canada that we brought over here with him is in here with him. Look who it is, y'all. There he is. The man himself, Mr. Dunbar. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. There it is, guys. Mr. Dunbar himself is here hanging out. He's got some young females with him. If we could right now from the Big Joe herd, we really could take some from there. But right now they're in the back doing their, uh, they're on their grazing plan right now. If we could grab some of them, bring over here, it'd be nice to have, give a couple more for him. But we only have so much room here at the Lynch property at the OG. Um, we don't want to overrun it too much. Uh, we may do some fence building here in the future, cut a lot of cedar trees down and do some fence building. As you can see, uh, this is our hay meadow. Just got some, uh, just got some just got this bailed you can see a lot of fresh regrowth here we may fence some of this stuff off and expand some of the the pasture ground here for these animals that are over here at the lynch place my mom and kevin's place so there's the canada heifer he's good he's got some company he's got some um, young bull yearlings in here with him they're not able to breed they can keep him honest and uh, on his toes at least and give him have him a little fun with some some testosterone and hormones flying around this pasture. You know what I'm saying? It's that time. So Dunbar's doing good. Kevin spends more time with him and my mom. Kevin and my mom spend more time with him than I do uh, right now. But we wanted to come see him and check on him. He's waiting on some cubes from me right now. He's doing good. Miss you, buddy. It's at least good to see you. This is where it all started. Right here at the OG... Mr. Dunbar and I really have to give a lot of credit uh, to him for the channel and the growth of the channel because uh, Dunbar was our first bull. He was my baby boy, always will be my big baby boy, but uh, I have to give a lot of credit to him, to him and his uh, young shenanigans of being a young bull and uh, just me being able to capture it and uh, and show you guys my experience and and what my what me and marissa kind of went through uh kind of raising this big guy here so love dunbar always will see you buddy all right something i want to do is it is hot and dry it's a typical oklahoma summer right always stops raining we get into the hundreds and these guys get hot not only do they drink a lot of water 
but they gotta cool off. So what I did is I set up a trail camera right here in front of me for a 24 hour period. We're gonna see how many times these yearlings get into this pond to cool off. Pasture one is where we currently have our yearlings, which are last year's 2023 calves. This is a specific spot where I put it, where I see them all the time. It's just the southwest corner of this pond actually has a shade tree next to it but there was an old stump here where i was the only place i could really mount this camera i learned a lot about the placement of this camera and being the one of the few stumps in this pond it was one of their favorite places here at the, the first night you can see here at 9 11 p.m got some interesting behavior a uh, spider kind of creepy but uh it was the first night and interesting capture still a little bit later at 321 we've got mr raccoon coming through doing his normal routine i'm sure and then here's our first sign at 7 20 a.m we've got two yearling bulls coming down to the water getting a drink and then boom here we go at 7 33 we've uh got somebody that's the first one to spot the camera bison always know when there's something new in their pasture they're so curious 357 is going to take a look and inspect and say hello move on and then here we go back at 908 we're getting a drink of water everybody's coming down you see they kind of move together as a herd that's pretty typical they're herd animals and so it's already 100 degrees notice that at 908 100 degrees fahrenheit and then by 909 it's already at 102 not sure about that but it's hot for sure and you can tell these bison as they all come down here checking out the camera sniffing around like always They're gonna go on about their business. We're gonna hang out here, 913, 914, 915. Uh, and what I figured out is this stump is actually a rub stump as well. So when they found it, smelt of it, they also hit the camera and moved it and shifted it kind of in a way where we couldn't see as much. Still got uh, some movement at 920, checking the camera out. And then we've got one that decided to lay down right here in front of the camera. But what I want you to notice is look behind and see the activity going on uh, behind this little bull. It's kind of creepy and not one of my favorite things. It's a water snake. I don't think that's a water moccasin, but kind of creepy that we caught that on camera. And then surely here, just a couple minutes later, from 935 to 943, he's coming back. Ugh. Doesn't bother the bison, goes around the bison and keeps going. All right, this little bull gets up at 950 after laying there for about 20 or 30 minutes, cooling off. Yes, water's looking nice and murky. Ten fifteen. we've got more action. Here they come rolling in again, getting a drink of water, cooling off. And then at 10.55, 357 is back. I think we found 357's favorite spot. And we're going to lay down and cool off again. So within an hour, this bull is back. And then we've moved positions at 11.06. Okay, we went out and grazed a little bit. Now we're back. It's 11.32, and we're going to lay down in the same spot. I think this is uh, the sweet spot for 3.57. It likes being on camera. we got another one coming across here at 104. Now, this is only one portion of the pond. It's just one corner. But most importantly, what I want you to notice is that temperature. Take a look there, 113. Now, I don't know how precise this trail camera is, but we know it's hot jumps up to 118 by 217 two or three four o'clock probably the hottest time of the day and then we see some of the last activity coming in at 328 is the last thing that i catch 
As you can see, there's looks like there's some weather change. The wind's blowing. And then that's all I have for that July 1st. And here you can see the next day we got some rain. So the bison more than likely aren't going to spend much time coming the pond. But here's some action from a great egret coming through trying to swipe up some fish, get a little grub. And I know a lot of you are thinking, Dusty, why are you letting your bison in your pond? Guys, these ponds were already existing here on this property. And just like when the bison were roaming on the Great Plains, what do you think they did at every water hole they stopped at? When it's hot and there's no shade, even though there is shade in pasture one, there's lots of trees and plenty of canopy cover for them to go and cool off in. But when the bison were roaming across the Great Plains, there wasn't a lot of trees. And so one of the things that they would do to cool off is they'd get into a lot of the natural tributaries, creeks and rivers, those kinds of places to cool off as they were roaming up and down the Great Plains. Well here, all of our bison always get in our ponds. Yes, we want to figure out a system of how to keep them out of the ponds, maybe using hot wire. We're gonna work on that in the future. But I know a lot of you are thinking when you're watching this video, golly, they poop, they pee in it, they waller in it, they get it dirty, and then they drink out of it. Yes, they do. It's not the cleanest water. Where do you think they drank from when they were in the Great Plains? Creeks and rivers and any water hole that they could find which a lot of the time, some of those water holes were actually buffalo wallows that were constantly used throughout the Great Plains for a long time. Besides this pond water, this is not the only available water that they have. We have a water tank, we get them fresh rural water right next to our barn. So they're getting fresh water. They have the availability to get fresh water. This is not the only water source that they have. Woo! You guys check out these yearlings here. Um, I'm excited. I may uh, bring some news to you about these guys pretty soon. We may be taking uh, a couple of these yearlings uh, possibly to a big show and sell that we've never been to before. And uh, I'm excited about it. I'm pretty proud. Marissa and I are pretty proud of some of the production and some awesome animals that we got out of this group here of our 2023 uh, calves. So these guys are getting big. There's some there's some studs in here that are looking pretty good, but got to appreciate the sunset. And uh, I just want to give a big thanks to Fabric um, for taking care of us today and sponsoring today's video. And uh, believing on our ranch, believing in our family and uh, what we do uh, for the American bison and just the ranch lifestyle of taking care of the land and everything. Fabric believes in us, and uh, I just want to give them a special thank you. With a kid's investment account from Fabric, you can start investing in your child's future today. I'm leaving a link right here in the description for you guys. Go to meetfabric.com slash bison. Thank you guys for being with us today. We'll keep on bison ranching.